is this a Sunday night? I mean, it's a pretty awesome crowd this evening, I must say. I, I am encouraged and edified by the crowd we have here this evening, even, even if Randall Van Fossen's here. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really good to see everybody here this evening. Thank you so much for coming here tonight. And Yes, Randall, it's good to see you. I just didn't like him for about nine weeks of our fantasy football season. So, uh, But uh, it's, it's great to have you here, and it's great to see you know, familiar faces, and it's also great to see visitors and, and, and people I haven't seen here for a while. So thank you so much, and I hope that the things I say here tonight is encouraging to you, that is edifying to you, and hopefully uh, when we leave here, uh, we not only have a smile on our face, but as you can see here, we can have a song in our heart, as Brother Cohen uh, talked about there in the 40th Psalm. Have you ever wondered when we get in a car, uh, for those that drive, and, and maybe you do this more by yourself than, any, than anything else, but have you ever gotten in a car and, and you turn to the station and there's your favorite song? And you don't care because nobody's not listening to you. You know the words by heart. You bought like the record and the eight track and the cassette tape. And I know some don't know what an eight track is, but 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 you bought every single uh, thing you can get for this particular song. You know the song by heart. And when that song comes out, you are loud and proud to sing it. And maybe the guy across the street there can see you sing it, but you don't care either. But when it comes to walking in here and we talk about the great promises that God has given you and I and the great blessings that he has offered to you and I, and when we get that songbook in front of our face, we're like this and we sing like this the whole time and we mumble and we just don't get along and talk about the importance of singing and we don't show these great things that God has given us and we don't express how it is a new song in our hearts and it should be something that we are built up and edify with. And we should sing just as loud and just as proud and just as encouraging as we do as we are in that car by ourselves. I know, we hear the songs over and over again, and we, we're learning songs tonight. And, and I asked Dwight if he would. I said, let me know when's the next time you do songs, because I want to talk about this, because I do believe it's important. And I'll show you why here towards the end, in particular. And, and what I want us to think about here is the importance of singing, and why do we incorporate it when we come together and worship, and why is it important to practice the principles that we find in Scripture and, and, and use those things to build up and edify one another. And hopefully that when we go through these things here tonight, you'll be encouraged and edified and think about what we need to do just to be a little bit better when it comes to our singing. Whether we're singing Amazing Grace or whether we're singing Master the Tempest is Raging. That's my favorite song. And, and, you know, many times when I've had a gospel meeting, I would have a guy come up to me and says, listen, uh, tell me a song you would like to hear before we get started. And that's the one I give them. I think it's 432 in Sacred Selections. I said, Master the Tempest is Raging. They look at that song and like, ha, ha. <laughs> How about uh, Amazing Grace? <laughs> But I want us to think about when it comes to singing, how it's important for us to be good at this and, and strive to be good at this. And I'll tell you, brethren, that when someone walks into a congregation and the first thing they notice is the singing, they stick around and find out what the preacher is going to talk about. <laughs> now, I want us to be individuals like that. When the individuals walk in the door and they hear that singing, one of the things they come to a conclusion with is surely God is within us here tonight. And one of the things I find interesting when it comes to singing is we have all the organic ingredients. Colossians chapter 3 verses 15 through 17 tells us, let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which you are also called in the one body and be thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, you do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. It's a passage we use all the time. And one reason why is because there is one ingredient that very few do not have. 
and it's his voice. You hear this guy speak tonight, and you hear the prayer that was led here tonight, and you hear the songs that was led by Harold tonight, and you hear these things that go on, and you pay attention to these things, and there are songs that we hear that it should give us to be moved by tears. It should give us a joy in our heart. It should give us just as mindful of what's going on here when it comes to singing. One thing I find interesting is in the book of Amos chapter 6. In the book of Amos chapter 6, it talks about how they was not very happy that individuals decided to make instruments like David did when it came to their songs. And the reason being was this, because while that music is very interesting and it's very compelling, one, it's not scriptural, but two, it takes away from the voice. If I tell you about Van Halen, you guys that listen to rock and roll, who's the first guy you listen to? think of, I don't think you think of Daley Roth. <laughs> you think of Eddie Van Halen. And sometimes when I think about the rock group Rush, I don't think of the lead singer. I think of Pert, that was the drummer. <laughs> you, and, and my point is this, because there is some musicians out there, you are not know, know them by their voice, you know them by their instrument. And the scary thing that we see sometimes in modern music today is the voice is disappearing and we let the, the, the instrument, mu instrumental music come in. And we got to try to understand how important it is that everybody has a part here in our congregation. And everybody has this. Everybody has a voice. There's not very many individuals out in the world today that can say, I cannot sing. And I'm not telling, I'm not saying that, well, I don't can catch a tune, or I, can't ha I don't have a tune. No, you can sing. Jack Black. One time, somebody told me, he says, you need to listen to Jack Black sing the national anthem. And I was kind of cringing about it. And the reason being is because Jack Black is a comedian. And Jack Bach is a comedian, and he has a band himself, and, and, I, and some of his music I just don't care much for. And I can remember he was supposed to do the national anthem at an L.A. Sparks game. And when he gets up there and he gets ready to sing, I am just bracing for impact because I think it's going to stink. I'm thinking Roseanne Barr. Maybe some of you guys remember Roseanne Barr and how horrible that was. That's what I was bracing for. But he surprised me. It was beautiful. And brethren, you think about how much admiration we take when it comes to the national anthem. And we don't want anybody to go up there and mess it up. And if we are really that driven for that not to happen for our nation, we should be that as much driven when it comes to giving praises to God. We should be moved to tears to sing. And you should be encouraged by the things that God has reminded us about how these things help us when we're feeling down, how these things help us when we're, when we're picked up, how these things help us to put our minds back into God. One of the things I found interesting when it comes to um, the one individual, he says, you know, it sets us in the right focus when it comes to singing praises unto him. We put, our, we, we put all the cares and the struggles and the things we deal with out in the world, we put that away for a while, and we focus on this song that is being sung to us. And then we say to ourselves, maybe it's not that bad. Because here I am in a house full of brethren that we're all saying the same thing. And we're all looking for the heavenly hope. And we're all trying to build ourselves up. And there's one thing that we can do to help with that. It's with our voice in song. Look, if you will, in Psalms chapter 95, verses 1 through 4. It changes how we feel. It says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great and the great king above all gods. And in his hand are the deep places of the earth. And the strength of the, of the hills is there also. 
And it reminds us that when David talks about the things that's going bad in his world, he is motivated by songs of praise towards his God. I think so, you know, that I'm going to come, continue to come here on Sunday evenings. Probably not after this. <laughs> this guy's name is Leo Welsh. He sings the national anthem at all the Columbus Blue Jackets games. There's only a few times that he doesn't sing it. It's, it's case we have some musical guests there. And if I wanted anybody to sing the national anthem, Penguins fans, it's that guy, Ken. <laughs> and there's only one really good reason why I like him. And it's because after he sings the national anthem for the United States, and then when we have Canadian teams, he'll sing the, the national anthem for Canada. He, after he's done, he does this. Like he just won the game. Like he just scored the winning touchdown. Like he just did something that is going to help the crowd get through this. Especially after our season. But that's besides the point. But the thing I love about Leo is he gets into it. Whether he is sick, whether he is feeling bad, it, when he has a, 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 a knot in his throat, no, no matter what's going on with Mr. Welsh, Leo, he is ready to sing that anthem and he is pumped about it. Now, brethren, think about that the next time anyone comes up here and leads a song that maybe it's not your favorite. I, don't have, I, have, I have songs that I don't like. I'll tell you one. As the deer pants. My kids think that is so funny. Every time we go somewhere and somebody leads that song, they look at dad, they know the number, they know the I don't know the number, but they know the number, and say, dad, look what they're going to lead. <laughs> but guess what? I still sing. As the deer pants for water, so my soul longs after you. I know it too. But whether it's a song I like or I don't like, one thing should be clear about is for you and I. I'm trying to talk as long as I can so I can leave that up there, Penguins fans. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I want us to be clear at is whether I like it or not, I am still singing. I want you to still sing. Because there is a day that's coming where we're going to have all these things, all these struggles and all these stripes and all the problems in our world, they're going to go away. And that's something that is worthy of a joyful noise. That is something that we can't sing about. And I don't care what song it is. Because now we see that God has won in the end. We know God was going to win in the end. Now we get to see it in fruition. So we should sing about it. We should yell about it. We should shout about it. Because we know that God's going to win in the end. And we, we as Christians are going to experience that. Look, if you will, that it doesn't matter who you are. It is an equal opportunity employer. How many times, brethren, have we have heard little children stand, uh, there's one that always sticks to my mind, one that stands up in her pew with her hands on, on top of the other pew, and, and she's got a songbook in front of her voice, or in front of her face, and she goes, ba la 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 She's not making any distinction whatsoever what the words are. She's not even in tune, but we love it. Because she wants to do something that everybody else wants to do. She wants to sing. He wants to sing. Look how we, we are reminded by the Ephesian writer who tells us that the days are evil. And don't be foolish. Let's, do, let's understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't be drunk with wine where is an excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I asked Dwight, uh, I think it's been a couple weeks now. I asked Dwight, I said, what is the songs that you're going to lead here tonight? And if I'm not mistaken, it's safe in the arms of Jesus. And it's Christ's love is all I need. I said, I want to know about these songs that you're going to lead because I want to tell stories about them. 
Because brethren, when we learn about the story, about how things come about, we get to appreciate it a little bit more. Now, there's probably a song that we remember from our high school days or even now that you hear about the story of the song and you love it more because you understand what the story is all about, why an individual wrote about this particular thing. So we appreciate it more. Safety in the Arms of Jesus is by an individual named Fanny Crosby. And Fanny Crosby is one of the most interesting songwriters that you will ever, ever meet. And the reason being is because this lady decided, if you've been following along with me on social media, you have understand that Fanny Crosby lived, up, lived to be 94 years old. You also understand, too, that Fanny Crosby has told people when she was going to retire is when she was cold and dead in the grave. <laughs> That was the day she was going to retire. But there's a lot more story to Fanny than we realize. And maybe you notice it by the glasses, but she's been blind ever since she's a child. She had some kind of infection that went in her eyes, and they put too much salve in her eyes, from my understanding. And because of this excess of the salve, it caused her to go blind. And she hasn't been able to see. And she says, it's going to be wonderful because the next person I'll see face to face is my Lord. But that's not the only thing that Fanny has dealt with. She was married. And she was married and they had a child together. But the child ended up not living very long. If I'm not mistaken from my gathering the story, it was a little girl. It was a baby girl. And she died either from typhoid fever or sudden infant death. And the thing is, Fanny did not talk about her daughter. It bothered her that much. And then shortly afterwards, her husband no longer stuck around either. And Fanny lived in a little place in New York and, and seemed like some people took advantage of her, but she never made a big deal out of it because she was doing what she liked to do best, write songs. There'll be very many songs in our song books. No matter if it's the hymns for worship, sacred selections, or, or songs of the church, you'll find Fanny's name there somewhere. But the thing I find interesting is this song she did, Safe in the Arms of Jesus. Some say that that song was supposed to be about her daughter. She had a, a man that came to her house. And he, when he came to her house, he said, Fanny, I'd like to have a song to go to Cincinnati with. And I'd like to present it in front of these young men and women. And presented a song. He says, can you help me with this? And they got together. And after a while of doing things, she says, this sounds like safe in the arms of Jesus. And that's how we got that song today. And maybe some of you, if you've been at some church funerals, and I know I have, that this song is played towards the end. Because of that blessed insurance that when it comes to our final day, We'll be safe in the arms of Jesus. Now, another interesting story, too, is this song, Christ's Love is All I Need. And, that, and that's by an individual uh, by the name of, let me get this here, I'm sorry. Geo Sides. Geo Sides. William George Sides. Uh, or George William Sides. The um, reason why I did this is because I started looking him up, and, and there's not much information about him. Um, usually it went to a reference to George W. Bush, and I was like, no, that's not the guy. <laughs> but George W. Sides, he was an individual who lived down in Alabama, and he was trying to work between farming, coal mining, and writing songs. And he wrote a hymnal, and, he, and him and, and a bunch of others wrote in this hymnal about Christ's love is all I need. And there's not much more talked about him with this. But I found it interesting that in the midst of him doing a farmer's job, which takes a lot of hours, doing a coal miner's job, which takes a lot of hours, he finds some time to let people know through a song that if he needs love, that Christ is all he needs. 
Let's be individuals, brethren. That when it comes to our singing here this evening, and we'll have the opportunity after services here tonight to sing about these things, let's let Christ's love be all we need. And finally, the purpose of singing. If you go into the book of Acts and we read about the Philippian jailer, we see one of the distinct things that is talked about here is Paul and Silas being in prison. And when he sits, and when they're in these stocks, if they're in these chains, they're in the deepest, darkest of prisons. Don't take the picture for what it's worth. If you follow along in scriptures, you understand that they're in a very gloomy place and receive 40 lashes for the things that they have done. Save one. Because 40 would have been considered cruel and unusual punishment. And as they are sitting here with these, with these stripes on their back, when they're sitting here where they can't really see one another, as they're sitting there to, to spend time and do their time, they begin to sing. And we understand through that passage that when they began to sing, that people started listening. How can these two individuals receive such a punishment and, and the thing that they respond to as they are sitting up in prison to sing? Have we ever met individuals like this where we find out they're going through all kinds of problems, they're going through all kinds of suffering, but yet they have a song in their heart and it seems like they're having the best day ever, even though that they're dying inside? That's Paul and Silas. But he's not giving Satan the opportunity here to let him know how much pain and suffering they're going through. They sang, and people paid attention. Did we understand what happens next? The earth shook. They became free from their stocks. The doors are open. They can escape. And this jailer that believes that here's these individuals that have all left him. And he knows when it comes to a Roman government that the thing that's going to happen to him is going to be worse than those guys leaving prison. He is going to die for his actions. He's going to die for his negligence. So he takes the opportunity to fall on his sword. Until Paul says, no, don't do that. We're all here. Then we hear that wonderful response. What must I do to be saved? Brethren, we can give a lot of credit to the miracles that has been performed here. We can give a lot of credit for this great earth shaking and, and able to free them. And we can give credit for Paul not leaving. But make no mistake, though, brethren, if we're so naive to say to ourselves that singing was not a factor in any of this. It shows an attitude. As we finish up here tonight, short lesson, I want us to be mindful when we get ready here to sing, whether it's invitation whether it's the Lord's Supper, whether it's a closing song, or whether it's the two songs that Brother Minor will lead here after services. Don't be afraid to give it all you got. Don't be afraid when you raise your book up that you also raise your voice. Because God has given us something wonderful here. Even tonight. You think about what we pray for and we pray about how we've been given this salvation that all who are willing to obey him will receive. That's for you. And you are worthy enough to have it. And he wants to give you this opportunity even now for there are some who have not received those riches and blessings from God. And we understand through passages like Acts 2.38, like Mark 16.16, 16, like Psalm 
like Acts 5, like Acts 8, like Acts 9, Acts 10. We understand from those passages that individual said, what must I do to obtain that? We understand baptism is a part of it. It's not the only part, but it is a part of our salvation. Repentance is another. Remember, he tells those individuals that talk about the horrible fate that happened to individuals. He says, if we don't repent, there is something worse for us than what has happened to these individuals who lost their lives to a Roman government, who lost their lives to the Tower of Siloam. There's a worse thing that is waiting for us if we're not willing to change. That's available for you here tonight. We could also pray tonight. I had a young lady send me a text message this morning on my way to, well, I, I found it on my way to services. She texted me like 11.30 last night. I was already in bed. And she said, Jay, would you please pray for me? And I was like, I sure can. And she, and she didn't live far away from the congregation at the, Eastside, or, uh, the Elk Fork Church of Christ where I used to preach at. So I asked her, I said, sister, would you please you're not very far away from Elk Fork. I said, would you please go to the church that night? Go to church today. When they ask for an invitation, they ask you if, you if anybody needs something, would you please go forward? And would you please tell them that you need prayers? And she said, oh, I don't know about that, Jay. She said, I, I, I'm very nervous and, and I get anxious and I, I don't know if I can feel comfortable coming in front of a lot of people and ask it for that. I said, listen, you had no problem. I hope this, is, you know, and I, I try to emphasize to her, I'm not trying to sound insulting or, or, or mean to her at all. I said, listen, you had no problem asking me in the middle of the night to pray for you. And I said, I have no problem whatsoever praying for you. I said, but there is, you are asking for help. And you need help. And I said, I guarantee that there is an audience that is waiting for you just to come forward and ask for it. But it takes you. Brother, may that someone here tonight. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Because I guarantee that there is an audience here tonight that will say to you, what can I do for you? And don't be afraid to ask for that here right now. And if you need to respond, won't you come while we stand and while we sing?